If you're going to spend any time studying art, don't waste your time with bad materials. Stay tuned and I'll show you my setup and how to get started the right way. What's up everybody, I'm Brian Knox, lead instructor at Foundation Art School, and today I'm gonna to give you a full rundown of the supplies that I use and recommend to all of my students. In drawing, the materials we use can either help us or hinder us. Using the wrong materials can leave us feeling frustrated and confused. You can spend hours and hours working on improving your skills, but if your supplies are of low quality, you'll be fighting an uphill battle that will make the process harder than it needs to be. This is by no means the only good way to train. There are lots of ways to study drawing, but this method works very well and allows students to learn quickly and effectively. I would recommend using it because if you plan to study for my videos, it'll be much easier to follow along and put the methods I teach into practice. In this video, I will go over three key supplies, charcoal pencils, paper, and kneaded erasers. These drawing tools are simple and very effective, so be sure to watch to the end of the video to get all of the information that you need to get started. We're gonna talk a little bit about materials. So the first thing you need to know is that I am seated on a drawing horse, right? Uh, it's really nice, I'm, you know, I'm seated here, my board uh, just kind of leans on this board, sticks up in the front, but they're kind of expensive and you don't have to have one. You could build one if you want. I mean, they're not, not super complex, uh, but you can get away with using two chairs, right? You can just literally sit in a chair, basically like I am now, uh, you know, in this position, and then just have another chair in front of you that you turn around backwards and have the back of the chair facing you. And as long as the back of the chair is about this height or maybe even a little bit higher, you can just lean the board on the back of that chair in front of you. And that's, that's really all you need. Uh, what I would all recommend not doing is leaning your board on a wall, right? And what that does is it prevents you from being able to move the board from side to side. And that's something that the drawing horse allows, is that I can take this board and spin it and do move it different ways uh, to pull strokes different directions. And uh, it's, it's really helpful. So uh, don't lean your board on the wall, but if you don't wanna buy a drawing horse, just use two chairs. I mean, you just sit in one, turn the other one around, pull it back and lean the board on it and you're good to go. So it's not too bad. Uh, the paper here is uh, smooth newsprint. So the way that I, the way that I was trained and the way that I draw uh, what I'm teaching, I mean, there's a lot of ways to draw and train, obviously, like countless. Uh, and a lot of them are really good. Uh, but in terms of doing demos and showing you guys information uh, that you need to learn, the most effective way to do that as an instructor and the most effective way to learn it as a student uh, is with these materials, right? Which is smooth newsprint and charcoal pencils and uh, needed eraser, right? And that's it, it's just three things, it's not a ton, uh, but you can get a lot out of these materials if you know uh, how to use them. Uh, so for the newsprint, it has to be smooth. That's, that's the one requirement, it is absolutely critical. Um, if you have rough newsprint, it won't work. It's gonna chew your pencils up and you're not gonna be able to get the level of detail out of it that you need. Uh, you're not gonna be able to get smooth tone and it's not gonna work quite right. So smooth newsprint is essential. Uh, here in the US, the brands that I typically recommend, well, the brand that I like the most is ProArt. Uh, ProArt smooth newsprint is really good, uh, but it's expensive. And I don't know that you can get it everywhere in the US, but you can get it most places. Uh, the second one would be Strathmore. Strathmore also has decent smooth newsprint. It's not as good as the ProArt, but it's, it's good and it's much more affordable, which is much better. Um, so. Those are the two brands I recommend. Uh, there's another one that's sort of like a discount brand called Paycon or Pacon, and they sell like a ream of like 500 sheets for like 20 or $30, which is cheap, uh, which is good, but the problem is it's very inconsistent and uh, it might be too rough, it might be too smooth. One time I bought a pack that it, like, it was weird. Every like, every five sheets had like three sheets that were usable and then another four sheets that were too rough and then three sheets that were good. And it went through that through all 500 and I had to go through and pick all the good ones out. Uh, but what's weird is even though that happened, uh, there was still so many of them in there that it would have been cheaper than buying uh, like a, a regular pad of pro art or something. So it's just a trade-off, you know, like I recommend the good materials if you can get them, but there's, there are alternatives that are good enough. Uh, that they'll get you by and you'll be able to use them. Uh, if you're not in the U.S. and you're in different parts of the world, I believe there are other brands that you can buy. I don't know off the top of my head what they are, 
but there's usually brands of smooth, smooth newsprint that you can buy throughout the world uh, in different areas. I think in the UK they call it like fish and chip paper or something. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So now we'll get to the important part, right? We got our drawing horse, we got our, our paper. Uh, I've got it just clipped to a board. I just have like one of these drawing boards that are wood with some sort of like, I don't know, light foam core or something inside of it. I, I put my pad, or not the pad, I tear the paper out of the pad, put the paper directly on the board, and make sure that I've got at least a pad's worth of paper clipped to my board at all times, and then rotate which page is on top. And so I'm always working on top of at least a pad's worth of paper or more that acts as a cushion and stops the texture of the board from coming through. If you use the paper in the pad, then the texture of the cardboard on the back of the pad will come through the paper and mess with it, and you won't be able to do what you need to do. Uh, so I just have these like little binder clips you can see. They're just like office clips. I think they're called binder clips. Uh, I got the big ones and they just clip right on here. And I can fit hundreds and hundreds of sheets of paper on here uh, with, with those clips. Uh, just don't leave them in the pad is the important part. Take them out, clip them directly to your board. Okay, so pencils. Um, we'll talk about pencils real quick. So that brings us to here. Uh, we have a few different types. These are the ones that I've found to be usable. The requirement for a good pencil, specifically for this type of learning, is a full range of value out of one pencil. That's our goal, right? Is to be able to get your lightest light values and your darkest darks all out of one pencil and to just develop the pressure sensitivity that's necessary to be able to do that, right? Some pencils are too hard and they won't let you get the dark values. Some pencils are too soft and you can't get the light values. There's very few that are just right, right in that sweet spot that will let you do what it needs to do. Uh, the number one pencil up until recently, I would have recommended these, right? This is a Conte 1710B. Uh, if you've ever taken one of my classes in the past, I'm sure you've heard me mention it. This is an unsharpened one. You can see the logo on there. These used to be the best and something happened. A few years back, their manufacturing process changed or something. And now they're not great. They, you can still get the full range of value, but inside of here, the charcoal is all broken up into pieces, right? And you can see how we have to sharpen them in order to do this technique. Uh, we have to get a lot of charcoal exposed here and, and get a nice taper. And unfortunately, these pencils now aren't sharpenable. They just fall apart. I even have an example here real quick. This is one of the last ones I tried to sharpen before I switched. It has a, literally a gap right here in the charcoal. And you can see it right there. There's like a big gap in the charcoal within in the wood. And so as you're sharpening, these chunks just fall out and fall apart and they're basically not sharpenable. Some of them are, but out of a box of 12, I would end up with maybe five usable pencils, and it's just not a cost-effective way to train. It's really not, because they're expensive to begin with. And if you have to throw half the box away every time you buy one, I mean, what's the point? That's, that's no good, everybody's gonna go broke. So I can't recommend these anymore. They used to be the best. Conte, if you're watching, shame on you. I, you've wrecked your pencils, and they're now useless trash pencils. So. I don't know. I mean, I hope they get better because I really liked them. And here's, um, well, here's a good one. Here's one that's unsharpened if you want to know what they look like in case you want to take your chances and see if you get a good one. Um, this is what I've switched to, right? This is a Wolf's Carbon 6B. It's pretty good. It's a little bit on the soft side compared to the Conte, but you can still get a full range of value out of it. The only issue with it is it's very thin, right? You can look at the width of the charcoal here compared to the Conte. And that means you have to be very careful with it because it'll break very easily, right? And that was another thing nice about the Contes is they're really thick so you can put a little more pressure on them without breaking them. Uh, but the key really is to be able to put your finger, if you're using it on the side of the pencil, right? So what's part of what's good about this technique is we can get very thin lines, right? We can drag it on the side, get thin lines. We can flip it up over this way, right? And get thin lines and do different things with it. Or we can flip it over on the side and get thicker lines. And you can see here, right? Like I can suddenly create a gradient. And doing this with graphite would take 10, 15 minutes. I don't know, it would take a long time. I just did that in seconds, right? And so now we can use this pencil to go from our darkest dark 
right? Like black all the way out to our lightest light. You know, just through pressure sensitivity alone. And that's kind of our goal with these pencils is to develop that ability. And that'll allow us to work way, way faster and more efficiently. Um, so these currently are what I recommend. If you're having a hard time with them and they're a little too soft, you can buy the 4B. The problem with the 4B is you can't get the darkest dark out of it. You can only do that with the 6B. So if you do want to use the 4B, you have to use it with the 6B for the darker darks as well. Um, but with a little bit of practice, you should be able to get the lighter values out of here pretty easily. I mean, we can get pretty light values, you know, and then I'm dragging my finger a little bit. I'm always kind of anchoring one, at least one knuckle on the board, you know, to kind of help prop it up a little bit and to help kind of get some of those lighter values. So it's okay if your hand hits the board, but you can see how we can get super, super light values or super, super dark values all out of one pencil. And, uh, you know, if you want to see examples of what this is capable of, you can just go look at my Instagram and scroll through there and see, you know, what you can get out of one pencil. You know, in graphite, this would take a number of different pencils and like 20 or 30 minutes of slowly building up tone to get it to work just right. And what this does is this allows me to show things in a demo. If I do like a 45 minute to hour long demo, I can show you guys things that would take hours and hours 20 hours in graphite of rendering and and i can do stuff you know i can do the equivalent with these materials really fast uh so that's the wolf's carbon 6b that's kind of what i recommend i have one here not sharpened in case you want to see what that looks like they kind of look like that um the only other thing i would recommend or not really the only other thing but I guess as an alternative right because people can't get these everywhere I understand that I mean material uh, acquisition in different parts of the world is very different uh, what people have access to so there's generals right just as a generals 4b if you can't get the wolf's carbon uh, I would basically recommend one of these two either the generals 4b or this is a Marie's soft but the problem is both of these are a little bit too soft right so the generals again you can get a pretty good range of value out of it right we can get our lighter values and we can get our darker values it doesn't go quite as dark but it works it gets pretty dark I mean, it gets dark enough that we can do a nice drawing for sure it's just very soft and tends to sit on the page more so it'll it'll smear a lot more Right, so you have to be much more careful with it while you're building it up and uh, not let it smudge and get smeared. Um, then, okay, so that's the General's 4B. The next one would be uh, the Marie's Soft, right? And there's also a Neutral, right? There's a Marie's Neutral. I think there's a hard one as well. I'm not sure, I haven't seen it. I know they sell graphite pencils that come like in soft, neutral, and hard, but in the charcoal so far, I've only been able to find soft and neutral. Uh, the neutral is too hard, right? Like we can't get the darker values out of it easily. We, like that's about as dark as it goes. Well, I guess we can get it darker. But you can see it's not as dark as that. We can't get like that deep, deep black out of it, uh, but you can get your lighter values out of it quite well. You know, you can build those up. Uh, so it works well for that. The soft one is a little bit too soft, right? And so with the soft one, we can get our dark values really fast. I mean, that just goes dark immediately. But it's difficult to get the softer values out of it, or the lighter values. And, uh, and it sits kind of like the generals. It kind of sits more on top of the the paper, right? Unlike the, the Wolf's Carbon and the Conte, uh, they kind of adhere to the paper a little bit better. And you can see this gets very smudgy, you know, and this, I don't know, not quite as much. I guess that does too. You have to be careful with these things. The other thing that we need is an eraser, right? So there's only, there's a lot of brands. We will use kneaded erasers. There's a lot of okay brands out there I guess but there's only one that I've found that's really good for this type of drawing that is this it's a Prismacolor kneaded rubber uh, kneaded eraser 
right? And the Prismacolor brand has harder rubber. I have a little chunk here I broke off. It basically, you unwrap it, and just break a little chunk off, and you can, you know, knead it, because it's a kneaded eraser. But with the Prismacolor, it's, it's a harder type of rubber, right? And the other brands that, that I've found can't quite do this because it's so soft. If you shape it into a shape, it immediately just kind of collapses when it hits the paper. But with the Prismacolor, we can kind of shape it into almost like a little duckbill type shape and kind of draw with it, right? And pull things back out. And it works well enough that we can get different types of line out of there. You know, we can get really thin lines. Uh, we can, I don't know, just do some different stuff with it. You know, or we can let it get thicker, the thinner. And so we basically, we can draw with the eraser, right? And we can really carefully do things with it, right? We can come in and pull a highlight out of an eye, right? We can come in here and just kind of carefully, right? Dab and pull a little highlight back out of here. Right, you can see that starting to show up there. And you would have a hard time doing with this with some of the other brands of kneaded eraser. Because as soon as the, the pa eraser hits the paper, it just, just collapses because they're too soft. But if that's all you can get, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It just means you have to plan ahead a little bit better. If you want to do a highlight in an eye, you're going to have to plan ahead and work around it and not rely so much on being able to pull it back out, kind of like I'm doing right now. Anyway, that's basically it for supplies. See, I mean, that's going almost back to the white of the paper there. It's just a little tiny dot. But that's basically it. I mean, I know there's not a whole lot to look at here, but um, you can see the results of, of this kind of method, right? I zoom out here a little bit. I mean, you can see, if I can find an example here, you know, we can get all sorts of edges out of it, right? We can get softer edges, we can get uh, harder edges, we can get just everything in between, a whole range of edge. And then on top of that, we can find uh, value, right? We can come in here and find uh, our darkest darks, our lightest lights. We can work through that entire value scale. And this was all done with just one pencil, right? And we got a variety of edge, right? We can build up our edges really fast. Uh, we can get our soft edges, our, our firm edges, our hard edges, uh, and practice that and do it really quick. And I can show you something like this in 15, 20 minutes, you know, and to do this, something like this in graphite would take hours. So that's the benefits of these materials and this method and this way of training. So if you have an interest in training traditionally, even if you plan to work, uh, you know, digitally or say to be a painter, uh, this is a great way to learn about value, a great way to learn about edge. Uh, shape, value, and edge, right, are the key things to uh, representational art, you know, and, and painting as well. It's like a stepping stone to being able to paint well. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, back to you, Brian. In this video, we covered the three key materials that I use in all of my drawings. I recommend these supplies to all of my students and I would highly recommend them to anyone who wants to study art in an effective and efficient manner. Even though you won't be doing finished work with these materials as a professional, using them is a great way to learn key concepts that can be applied to all mediums. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for art education videos. New videos come out every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. What questions do you have about art supplies and materials? Have you tried using these materials before? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be reading your comments and will do my very best to answer any questions you have for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.